they should be learning things that they can actually go out and do. Right. So we've got uh, we're live on YouTube. So no more of this. No more of this. Yeah. OK, so we will. Um... Got a lot of things on the. Um, I thought we would, uh, David, on the whatever it's called. Give me a clue. Padlet. Audio. Audio. Yeah, we've got a few maps on the on the gallery. Right, we are. We ready to go? Just checking the audio again to see if we've got any others. I can't see. Oh, the maps. Have we got a few? Maybe I need to refresh. Mine takes me straight to the masks thing. Is that right? Uh, I might have just put the link. I'll, I'll just change the link over. Um, and it looked like some good stuff on the... Some very nice pieces of writing on the audio. Do you, have you got your favourite that you want me to play? Well, I didn't listen to them. I read them. All right, so we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Send them in. Waiting for a couple of people to join. Uh, being the Zoom's being a bit slow this morning, so we'll just bear with us a few seconds. Seems to be one or two people having uh, connection issues. I think, by the look of it. Um, Right, we'll make a start anyway, and uh, still one or two people waiting to join, but we'll uh, hopefully they'll be able to get in. If not, don't forget, of course, you, your connection drops out. You can always join via the YouTube live stream on the session page. Right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Live. It's week two of our Dark Whispers season. I think it's the ninth season of Teaching Live, so we've been going three years now, which is which is quite an achievement in its own right I guess of sorts um how are you this morning Pi? I'm in fine fettle we've had uh, a really nice uh, bit of weather recently so I've been going out in the garden um so I imagine everybody at school's been doing the same thing the, we I used to but when I was a teacher we used to do a lot of things like rounders yes um, because we've been inside for so long in the cold and it was sunny afternoon. And I'd say, come on, let's go and have a game of rounders. Uh, oh, still, 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 uh, still a thing, rounders, Pike. Yeah, excellent it's stuff. Really so, yeah, rounders. no, I'm looking forward to today. We've got a good start with some poetry last week. Um, so, David, how are you faring this morning? I'm very good, Pike. Thank you. Uh, lovely, lovely morning here. There's hardly a cloud in the sky, actually. You probably see the curtains are drawn behind me. The sun beaming through. Uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, Dark Whispers, the next bit. OK, so what we're going to do today um, in Dark Whispers, the um, the skyship sets off in order to find a lost explorer. And I was wondering whether we could work on some instructions in terms of how to find a lost explorer. Um, and the warm up game is just to get us into the whole idea of um, instructional language and inventing instructions. So partner A, partner B. And um, I put a list down, David, of suggested ideas like we could do instructions for magical things like how to find a star or a planet or a moon or a lost cloud, how to travel across a glass mountain, how to trap a dragon or a goblin or a troll, how to make a magic carpet work, how to capture a moonbeam 
how to make an elephant a pet, how to make friends with a rattlesnake or a mouse, how to tame a tiger, how to communicate with an alien, how to fly on a cloud. So I've got some ideas there. Obviously, in your pairs, you may have different ideas. If you dry up with the game, then obviously choose another one or start all over again. So John's put that little list um, up there. And partner A, obviously, um, you're going to need those instructional things like first, next, after that, and finally. So I've, I've got a run of four there. First, you do this. Next, you do this. After that, you do this. And finally, you do this. So do you want to be A or B? A starts with first, and then B goes to next. A goes to after that. B goes to finally. So uh, I'll, go, I'll go partner A, Poe. Okay, you do partner A. Um, and so you get to choose which one we're going to do, David. Uh, let's go with how to trap, because I know you like dragons, Poe. I do. Let's go with how to trap a dragon. Okay, so you start with first. First, play some heavy rock music <laughs> to attract the dragons to your location. Okay, next. Um, okay, so we're attracting the dragons in. Next, um, cast an enormous net made of elvish steel across the dragon that you wish to capture. After that, yank the string tight and ensure you stroke the dragon under its chin to calm it down. Finally, place the dragon <laughs> onto the back of a lorry and drive it to John Sutton's garden <laughs> and release the dragon. Thanks, Pai. That's my pleasure. So <clears throat> we've had a go at one of them. Choose another one, Davey. We'll have a go at another one. Uh, let's go with how to communicate with an alien yeah okay you do first <clears throat> um <laughs> communicate with an alien so i'm picturing just i'm stood there there's an alien stood there in front of me what do you need to do first of all first raise your right hand and move it forward and back, as that is an alien welcome signal. Next, offer to take the alien to McDonald's for a Big Mac. <laughs> uh, after that, Use a whiteboard and a whiteboard pen to draw your sentences as these aliens only understand pictorial communications. That's a good one. I'm being silly. You're being quite sensible. Try, I'm trying, Pi. I know. I can see you're trying to rescue it. <laughs> um, finally, <clears throat> um, finally, um, finally, you'd have to give it a gift of some sort, wouldn't it? Finally, um, take your alien to accessorize and, uh, and offer to spend your Christmas voucher um, buying it um, a full range of trinkets um, so that it can dress itself up. Now, obviously, after two minutes, John, you can swap over. So if you've been partner B, you then get to choose. So I'll just choose one. So let's have a go at um how to make friends with a mouse because as you know um mice um are something that because i live in the country we get in the house uh, so how to make friends with an with a mouse first 
provide a full range of cheeses every night at the uh, on a tray um, outside the mice, the mice's, the mouse's hole. Um, next, ensure the area is cat free. After that, um, after that, provide um, uh, plenty of soft wool so that the mouse can go and build a very cosy nest. And um, finally, name your mouse. <laughs> um, only with a name beginning with the letter G, because that's the rule. That's the rule, exactly. In in mouse world, <laughs> they all have names starting with G. Okay, I think everybody's got the basic idea. First, next, after that, finally. It's a bit like a little story mountain, but it's um, for uh, instructional writing. Choose one, or of course, uh, you can adapt one. So instead of a trap and a dragon, you can do a troll or whatever you fancy. And just warm up. If you get any good ideas, jot them down in your little notebook because you might be able to use them later. John will warn us after what? Two minutes, John, I think. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop you after two minutes and you can swap. So it's first, then. No, first, next. next. First, next. After that, and finally. Finally, that's it. First, next, after that, finally. Okay, so four minutes on the clock, starting now. Okay, we're halfway through. So when you finished, swap uh, your role. So if you were doing next and finally, you're now doing first and after that.
Okay, that's uh, the game over. So now we, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, now we need to go to today's session page on um, the Teaching Live website. So I'll just pull that up for you. And we'll go on to the Padlet activity, Padlet 1. Right. Okay, so um, we're going to be um, leading towards writing a set of instructions. So what we're going to do is have a go at practicing some instructional sentences. And what you can see here, John, is I've started each one, the, the verbs in red, those are what I used to call bossy verbs. They're technically imperative verbs, um, and they tell you what to do. So the first one says, travel to the edge of the forest or ask the trees for advice, buy a moonbeam, catch a firefly, follow the butterfly, enter the forbidden castle, wait by the old well, stand by the side of a glass hill, seek a friend at the village. So you start off with a bossy verb and in order to help you, I put a bank of verbs there. You may well think of other verbs yourself. Remember, you're telling somebody, you're instructing them what to do. You go to the edge of the forest. Uh, and what you can see halfway through all of my sentences, John, I've now I've put in an and. And another verb telling you what to do and sleep beneath trees and listen as the leaves reply and follow it at night and like the midnight way, etc. So I'm looking for a sentence that's an imperative and it's got two things in it that you're supposed to do. Seek a friend at the village and travel across the moorland. Stand by the side of a glass hill and sing about your wishes. So it's a magical adventure that we're on. You've got a bank of verbs there to help you. So you might choose one out like grab. So what are we going to do? We get, we're telling somebody what to do um, on this adventure. OK, grab a bow and arrow and wait beside the waterfall. So I put in a list of things and creatures that you might want to use, as well as a list of places. So you might say, um, I don't know. Uh, let me have a look. Um, um, open or close. And I could go to the different places. Open or close. Well, the gate. Open or close the gate that you find in the glass hillside. and. And then I'm going to choose a thing or a creature and um, pick up the glowing stone that you find there. So those verbs and things and creatures and places there to help you, obviously. But follow the pattern that I've done with the um, imperative up front. And it's an, it's an instruction. We're sending somebody on a magical journey. We're instructing them what they might do in order to find this lost explorer. That should be quite straightforward, this one, I think. Pi, make sure you get your uh, punctuation uh, right. Ah, yes, capital letter and full stop. I know, Dave, I can see his beady little eyes. <laughs> Even now, checking, looking. Scanning. Scanning. So we all know, we all know about that. So, Pi, what I, we're looking for is the imperative... Yes. And two things. Two ideas, yes. Okay. So follow the pattern of my sentences. That's why I put the and in the middle in red. It basically gives you a compound sentence, really. <coughs> it's two sentences joined by and, and they're both imperative sentences. They're telling you what to do, technically. Sprint to your enemy's settlement and unleash all the prisoners. Lovely one, Rosie. Spot on. So you know what you're doing. You can now carry on and invent a number of those. In fact, you might sort of link them together. Leave the treehouse and kill a golden eagle. Bit savage, Esme, but I'm loving that idea. You've got your capital, full stop, etc. So again, you can just carry on and write a string of these. I'm not sure I like the idea of golden eagles being killed. No, I don't like the idea at all. They're very precious. They're wonderful but... creatures. Yeah, but in this world, John, yes, 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 yes. they've got iron beaks. <laughs> particularly nasty. I, uh... They're thoroughly unpleasant creatures. <laughs> but 
run towards the Earth's core and drink tea with it. Hmm, interesting uh, idea. Interesting one. And what's personifying the... the Earth's core. Yeah, and what's the little punctuation bit that you're worried about there, John? The core of the... Oh, yes, of course, the uh, apostrophe. Uh, yeah. So the core belonging to the Earth, so it should be Earth apostrophe S. Uh, yeah. Benjamin. <laughs> Stand outside Old Trafford and then sing Manchester United chants. Thank you very much, Carter. <laughs> well, yes, so I should, you could try try doing that and singing Liverpool chants or Leeds chants and see how far it gets you. Yes. Catch a wild horse and climb onto its back. Stand in front of the baby you are about to eat. Alfie, that is thoroughly unpleasant. And you also haven't followed. You've got the first bit. Right, but you haven't followed my pattern, so they're not two ideas. So go back to the pattern and have a look at it, please. Hamad, you've got the first part. Leave the magical special tree house alone. Then you need and, but um, but um, and do another one. Nancy from Kano, catch a wild horse and climb onto its back. Now, it's and it's, uh, it apostrophe s. Uh, is a um, that's uh, it is, isn't it? Because the apostrophe it, takes yeah, the place of the I, yes. It's it, what, what's the word? Um, it's ITS, you don't need an apostrophe to show it's, it's one of those ones that um doesn't really follow the rule. So on its back, um, it's is uh, not it's IT apostrophe S, it's just ITS. I got there in the end. What's the word I'm looking for? Contraction? No, not a contraction. Well, possession. No, the where you put apostrophe in instead of a letter. It's a contraction. A contraction. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. It's, no, it's don't is the the yes. is do not, and the apostrophe represents the missing o. Yes. So it is a contraction. You were right. People are, are running with this. Scuttle to the attacker's release. Uh, to the attacker's release your anger into one final strike. So um, travel, go on. Travel to the abandoned hospital and screech as you catch sight of the prisoners still there. Ooh. Layla from Minera. That's a good one. Eloise, escape to the luxurious island and cascade down the river. Nice choice of word. Your word wasn't emissive, was it, John? Emissive apostrophe. Is that is that is that what it is technically? Apostrophe of omission. Yes. Catch a, uh, a tarantula and make it your friendly pet. Jump over the spider-infested cliffs and stand in front of the engulfing fire. Nancy from Cardo. Travel to the abandoned farm and listen to the strangled squawks of the ghost chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that. <laughs> I imagine that's something out of um... the strangled squawks of a ghost chicken. That's brilliant, Nancy. I really like that. <laughs> Run towards Pi Corbett with a capital P. Pi will be most insulted and eat his glasses. I don't recommend it. You'll cut your tongue. That's Alfie. I'm not sure which school you're at. Creep into your friend's friend's house so blessing you need apostrophe s because you need the house belonging to a friend creeping into your creep into your friend's house and scare them like you have never done before jamie and eloise catch a tiger and feed it biscuits i'll tell you what you two you could name the type of biscuits i'd go for what what do you think chocolate digestive what would you have john uh, I don't really. I'm not a biscuit person. No. I, I, I like I like cookies. I suppose if I push came to shove, <coughs> I would I would have a cookie. Winnie, from Stone, climb to the tip of time and dance until the stars fade into the sunset. Love the idea of the tip of time. Kieran. Enter the dark, damp cave and throw in a block of cheese in case of rats. I like that idea. Eat the biryani or the doll will run after you. Well, there you go.
<laughs> Nancy's on a roll this morning. <laughs> Capture your head teacher and feed it a couple of moldy biscuits. I like the like the idea of the a t- head teacher being an it. Yes. <laughs> Rather than a he or she. Capture your head teacher and feed it a couple of uh moldy biscuits. Have you got a have you got a demon head teacher at uh, at uh, Carno, Nancy? I think you better be a little bit careful with uh, how you how you proceed for the rest of the day. It might not go well. <laughs> go to the shop and buy every sweet. Very good. Stuck, scuttle to your enemies, releasing a final attack, destroying the multiverse. Um, I do we need? I th- I think you might need a uh, a comma. Uh, after scuttle to your enemies uh tayab um uh, if you could you could just say scuttle to your enemies and release a final attack because we're looking for imperatives (coughs) rather than uh, um the verb form you've used there Jacob from Bolton Parish. First, get the orb of seeing. I like that idea of the orb of seeing, Jacob, and find out where the evil lord of chickens is. <laughs> this is something out of Wallace and Gromit, it sounds like. <laughs> yes. Ghost chickens. Lily from Minerva. Um, capture a wild dog and lead it to the mountain. You could extend that to like to the mountain of doom or... Uh, Lily from Manera, uh, fly down to a field and wait for the screech of a night howler. Ooh. So using a kenning there. Yeah, a nice little kenning. Love it when people do that, when they, yeah, and Harim, Bolton Parish, leave the forest and you will see a skin walker. How about that, a skin walker? Emma from St. Patrick's, enter the Castle of Secrets and hear the sound of humanly echoes. I think it would probably is human echoes. Uh, you could nip back and just complete the punctuation, Emma, by clicking on the edit button. You know, the in the top right hand corner of the um, your post-it note. Putting your full stop in. Yeah. Oliver from St. Patrick's, um, go to the sun and melt away all your homework, uh, all of your homework, all your homework. All of your homework. I think both work. Um, but you do definitely need a full stop, Oliver. <laughs> right. We'll come out of the um, Padlet and go back to the session page. And uh, we will. Uh, have we got any audio this morning, David? We have. We, have, we, we had loads, actually, oh, of audio yeah. come in. Yeah. Um, 28. Uh, submitted over the week and I'm going to try and squeeze in three if that's all right two of them are quite short and there's a a bit of an extended one Uh, I've chosen three from three different schools Um, so first of all we're going to go to uh, Stone with Woodford School Um, they've been with us I think from the very beginning Pi yeah Um, and also when we did radio blogging so uh, maybe four years they've been working with us here Uh, So I'll play this one, and this is from Ashley, um, and it's there on the Padlet. If you want to read it, you can do, because it's there as well in in type. But I'll just play this. I'll turn my volume up so you can hear it. This is Ashley's from Stone with Woodford. On the island of Donuts, I saw trees and the sea was delicacy. All you could eat are donuts. On the island of peace, I listened to soft music play in my ears. On the island of water, I felt the way I felt waves brush against my skin, covering all parts of their body. On the island of peanuts, I consumed salted nuts and chocolate ones. On the island of scent, I smelled the warm odor of all foods. You can have anything you can think of. On the end of topic, subjects are being taught by students. Oh, the island of scent. You kind of know what's going to happen on that one, I think, or you know what's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I like the sea was delicacy. That's an interesting line. 
I thought, nice and clear. I think Ashley, I think that's the first one we've heard from Ashley. So um, well done. What yeah. have you got next, John? Uh, not John, David. It's okay, uh, John. Uh, we've got got one from St. Patrick's here, um, a school up in Troon. And I don't think we've heard one from this person before. This is uh, one by Lois. Ah, yes. And this is the Island of Colour. So let me play this one for you. The island of paint. I see the mangoes dancing in the lake, the luscious candy floss waiting to be eaten, Peg's snorting song making her hearing feel unreal, and watermelons with the ripest taste. The island of blue. I saw the baby blue sky, the brightest blue sea, diamonds glistening, and the beautiful Scotland flag waving in the wind. The island of yellow. I saw the sun sparkling, sunflowers sp sprouting, gold waiting to be found, and light beaming at you, with a trophy for you to win. The island of orange. I saw tangerines, tangerines bursting with juice, a sunset smiling down at you, tulips springing for spring. The island of red. I saw rubies glowing, roses, petals falls falling so gracefully on the ground, strawberries cracking with liquid, hearts filling up with kindness, fire burning and flaming up. The island of light. I saw polos with amazing taste, paper hmm. waiting for a drawing on it, clouds with the softest touch, snow so freezing it was making snowflake, marshmallows exploding with taste. I, lo I love that. I love that idea of the colours, and then everything linked to that colour. A lot of um, alliteration in there as well, Pi. Yeah, no, it was really well done. Um, fantastic and beautifully read. I thought um, I, the one I liked best was the, the, the island of white, where there were polos, which is an <laughs> idea that I'd not heard before. Um, so yeah, well done. Nicely read too, and great to have um, a new voice on there. So what's your third one then? The third one I've gone for um, somebody we, we know fairly well, and that's Ibrahim. Ah, yes. Um, from uh, Bolton Parish, because we know Ibrahim's a good performer. Yes. Um, so let's listen to this one, uh, and I'll play this one for you. It's right at the top, John, top left. Oh, is it right? Sorry. There uh, you go. Got it. Thank you. On the island of Serial Pill, I put a bonus body laying there with no heart remaining, only a crumbling chest. On the island of gloom, I felt a frozen breath lifting me like a feather blowing in the wind. On the island of poison, I smelled an apple floating towards my mouth as fire leaped and a lion creeping on its way. On the island of Wednesday Adams, I heard a hand tapping on the desk like a dark door knocker. <laughs> on the island of clowns, I heard a honk along with a scream as loud as thunder. On the island of monsters, I felt an affected arm reaching out, trying to drag me under. On the island of death, I felt the wind singing, die, cry, don't lie. On the island of torture, I heard an old man screaming, like a rat trap. I love that. And something about that, the penultimate verse there, about the wind singing uh, and actually saying what it's singing. I think it's great. Really well done. What do you think, Pi? Yeah. And the way uh, die, cry, and don't lie. Um, there was another one. On Dark the island of Wednesday Adams, I heard a hand tapping on the desk 
And this is what Abraham does when he reads. He, he went on the desk like a dark door knocker. So he really slows it right down. My favorite was I felt a frozen breath lifting me like a feather flowing in the wind, partly because the sounds of the frozen, the breath, the feather, the flowing um, seem to create the meaning. Yep, tremendous, tremendous piece of uh, writing. Lots of good ones um, on there. We'd like to get more. Uh, any thoughts, John? Yeah, no, I, I thought I thought Ibrahim uh, delivered that brilliantly. Uh, I just love the way he, he just takes, he just really slows it down and takes his time. Um, and, and, and as a result of that, he, he really, you can almost see him enjoying the words as he reads them. It's, uh, it's uh, terrific stuff. Yes, he savours each word, enjoys each word, he and gives each word weight. He and does indeed. The, the, yeah. There's a poet called Ted Hughes, which I don't know if um, the children will have heard of, but when he read, he did the same thing. He read quite slowly, and it made it really effective. And I can hear that the uh, young writers from Troon, they also try the same thing. Uh, as well, slowing it down. And it's particularly effective with poetry. Um, I think when you're reading story, you need a bit of flow there. But because poetry is short and fairly condensed, you can afford to slow it right down and savour the word. So great start um, uh, there for week one. Well done, everyone. So we go on to um, the second Padlet. So go back up to the session page. Um, if I go to the right place. And go on to Padlet 2. Yeah, so when you're on your journey, what might happen at different places? So I've got two boxes here, John. In the red, we've got lots of different places that I could think of, like gates and towns and libraries and churches and shorelines. So you may think of your own ones, but I've, I've put a bank of places there if you're in need. But I've also got a lot of um, position words above, across, against, along, among, around, under, beneath. Um, and they're positioning words. And of course, they're known as preposition. So quite easy to remember those ones, prepositions and places. So if we look at my model, I've started with what's called a prepositional phrase at the gate. So that's telling me where. So each one starts with a phrase like that at the gate, inside the well, in the gallery, by the path, beside the sea's edge, under the tree, in front of the castle, above the woods. So we've got a prepositional phrase at the front. What do you notice happens after the prepositional phrase, John? Well, you're using um, an imperative verb. Yeah, and just before the imperative oh, verb? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you have a comma. Five. Yeah, so you've, you've, you've got both things. Yes, I was, I, was, I, was, I was getting ahead of myself. You're getting ahead of yourself. So we've got our prepositional starter, which tells us where. So if somebody's on a journey, they might get to, I don't know, the well, and they're going to stop and go, when you go inside the well, comma, then you get your imperative, pause and listen for instructions. So you can imagine somebody at a well leaning over and listening, and the well is whispering instructions. At the gate, comma, Wait for midnight to chime in the gallery, something like an art gallery. Stand by the painting of a mirror and a message will appear. By the path, you will find a doorway into the hillside. Beside the sea's edge, a speaking shell will direct you. Under the tree, a message has been written. In front of the castle, an eagle awaits for you to climb aboard. Above the woods, a cloud will take shape. So some of those are for, followed by the imperatives, the wait, the pause, the stand. And then it changes slightly. I've got you will find a doorway. And then it's what things are doing. A speaking shell, a message has been written. So there's slightly different ways of doing this one. But in essence, you're starting telling us where and then what happens or what the traveller has got to do. I think it's fairly straightforward, John. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So let's get some nice, start off with your prepositional phrase. Look out for where you had at the sea's edge. Look out for an apostrophe if it's um, 
Winnie from Stone with Wood for bringing a strong one straight away. Um, Pi at <clears throat> uh, it's moved uh, at the end of darkness. Wait for the whispering, beckoning call of the shadows. Oof. You don't need a second comma there, Winnie. You, the first one's fine. The second comma after beckoning, you don't need. At the end of the darkness, wait for the whispering, beckoning corn, uh, call of the shadows. Um, Esme, watch out for the capital letter. Outside the woods, check for daring danger. I like your daring danger. That, that little bit of alliteration makes it sound more interesting. Uh, Callie from Minera, you for Minera, Minera, Minera. I don't know. Um, it's disappeared. I think there we are. By the storm, wait for the uh, rain clouds to f uh, fail, fall. Uh, you need a comma after by the storm <coughs> because that's your prepositional phrase. Bailey, I think you probably need a bit more punctuation in this. Let's have a look. By the car you will find a secret doorway. Think then I'd put a full <coughs> stop or a semicolon, open the door and go inside um, and wait, and you will find a note. And Bella, at the grave, wait for the haunting howl of the wind and the silent creak <coughs> of the porch gate. That flows nicely. little touch of alliteration there. John, uh, just to let you know, Callie did edit that after your suggestion and put the comment. Thank you. Well done, Callie. Yeah, she did indeed. Yeah, we love that when people do that. Yep. Uh, just one from Carno, Nancy, uh, and Elgin. In the stable, watch out for the flailing hooves of the restless horses. Loving that, um, restless horses. I can almost see them. I'm wondering why they're restless. Matilda from BPS. In the woods, comma, you need a comma there, uh, Matilda. You could go back and edit that. The wind whistles like a violin being played for eternity. Uh, outside, yeah, outside Habiba from Bolton Parish, outside the woods, make sure no one is following you. Nancy from Carno again at the bottom of the sea, tame a wild shark. And Libby looking up at the sky, wait patiently for a star that will form into a message. Loving that idea. Now, one or two people are going into narrative storytelling here. So yeah, I noticed that. Um, in the forest, I encountered a cave to which I hid in for the night, uh, which is fine, but it's not what we wanted, William. Uh, so you need a comma after in the forest. Um, if you'd have said find a cave um, in which to hide for the night, that would have been perfect um, because you're giving somebody an instruction, telling them what to do, which is what we're looking for. And the same with uh, as one I just spotted. Um, yeah, Asher from Bolton Parish. In the haunted house, I saw dark phantoms all over the place. So again, you're, you've gone into narrative storytelling there. Um, <clears throat> perhaps you could have written in the haunted house, look for dark phantoms um, or wait for dark phantoms, something like that. <clears throat> so nancy again at the old graveyard watch out for the death unicorn lurking beneath the shadows it's another one from carno layla at the library the librarian watches you carefully <laughs> as you browse the books on the shelf you might have to tweak that a little bit but you've got an idea on the go there Harry from Stone with Woodford by the chapel await the holy chorus of the calming angels. Ooh. <laughs> Very good, Harry. By the path, you will find McDonald's on top of the hill where you find pie eating with John. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, Lois and Ollie at St. Patrick's at the creepy fascinating door, comma, wait for it to call you in, whispering your name. Uh, yeah, very good. I saw one about Carter from St. Patrick's. In Old Trafford, victory awaits you. <laughs> in his dreams. Yeah, think <laughs> on. At the <laughs> Jacob from Bolton Parish, at the King's coronation, eat all the cakes and force him to play golf with you. <laughs> okay, well, just hold up the coronation ceremony while we while we do a quick round around the. Uh, I don't know where the local golf course to Westminster Abbey is. <clears throat> Underneath the sun, follow the shining path. Maya from Minera. Yeah, that's spot on, isn't it? You can hear that that's yeah. a set of instructions. Yes, it is. Sometimes, yes, you can overwrite these quite easily. Yes. Um, At the ho Nan Nancy's on an absolute roll today. At the horse, unless there are a lot, multiple Nancys at Carno. We haven't, we haven't sort of, there could be more than one. At the horse show, watch out for the misbehaving horses. <clears throat> All right, we need to come out of that one, out of the Padlet, and we'll have a quick look at the gallery. Uh, if we go back up to the session page, now we would do, if we go to the right place, uh, we were doing um, maps last week. I didn't see anybody from Forest Academy on the on the Padlet today, John. I yeah, that I wonder. Uh, I wonder. Yes. Uh, so Sylvie uh, from Forest Academy. I like that map, uh, the creepy castle, <clears throat> the Rocky Mountains, lakes, desert, Strawberry Island. Uh, luxurious lakes, very good. Um, and that's uh, Swayze as well from Forest Academy, another good one, and Lacey as well. They're all nice pictures. So well done, Forest, for getting your maps in. Uh, if you add, if you've not finished your maps and you you want to add them to the gallery. <laughs> then there is still plenty of time to do so. So you can add your maps to the, cal the gallery and David will uh, approve them as and when they get posted. So today's um, gallery challenge pie. Well, I've got slight panic as, as ever because I'm old and have a bus part. I can't remember. Oh, there it is. <laughs> OK, so in my final one, I think I'm right in saying I've got a butterfly and I thought, aha, we'll do a butterfly because they're rather nice things to practice design and colour. So what I did was I folded my um, piece of paper in half and um, I drew the wings, as you can see, on the right hand side there and one of those little feeler things and then the main body of it. Now, if you go down. Um, this was all in pencil because, you know, John, I always like to do it very carefully in pencil first. So that if I make a mistake, I can get a rubber and sort it out. So I put a fairly simple pattern on knowing that I was going to do some painting. And you've always got that problem if you put a, a band of yellow and then next to it, you put a band of blue. If you're not careful, the blue, will, if it's not dry, the blue will mix with the yellow and you've got green. Now, this is the little trick. So what I did here was I actually did this in with a charcoal pencil. You could do it with um, paint. So a fine brush. You could do it with paint um, and going over it very carefully. I've also done it with uh, where I've mixed paint with a little bit of um, PV glue and stirred it together. So slightly different ways of doing it. But I went over the basic pattern. So <clears throat> if I look at it, there's a circle there I can see I miss. But anyway, um, now we've done this before. So what I then did was close the pages together. So because I was using charcoal, there's a very faint outline. But that does mean that I now fairly simply can get that symmetrical pattern that you get in things like butterflies. So I went over the outline. And I used, actually, I used oil pastels. 
haven't quite finished that, but I wanted to get it up there. In some ways, I don't mind the fact there are little bits of white. It depends um, on how you feel. So you could do it with pastels. You could do it with chalks. Always a little tricky with chalks. Or you could do it with paint. But if you're going to do it with paint, remember to leave um, uh, to allow the bits, the bands and the circles and things to dry. So that's the basic idea. Design a butterfly. I think that could make a very nice illustration by the poem. Or indeed, if you did it on reasonably big sheets of paper, John, you could have some intricate designs for a nice display. Right. OK, so we'll go uh, on to next. We'll go to the blog challenge. So if I just get myself organised uh, and go to the right place. And then share my screen so we can find what we're doing. Well, not surprisingly, we're leading towards writing a blog um, that is, it, it's an interesting one because it's a bit like a set of, it's obviously a set of instructions, how to find a lost explorer. Um, and it uses instructional features like those imperatives that you can see, uh, go, go to, ask, travel. Um, but it's magical. Go to the end of the moonlit lane. And after a sunless mile, wait by the wooden gate. Ask the unicorn for a small slice of luck and pocket any advice. Travel on the unicorn's back to the distant mountain ridge and find the hidden tower. Here you must seek a web full of the tail ends of splintered rainbows, like the shimmer of butterfly wings. Take a handful of glistening air and stash it on your back, packed in your rucksack. You must now walk in glass shoes to the forest of disbelief. Scatter the slithers of rainbow on the forest floor beneath the tallest tree. A door will open in its trunk. Wait for the sound of a silver bell, then enter with caution. If luck is on your side, the lost explorer will be waiting. P.S. Do not loiter by bridges where trolls might lurk. So I got that one. I and mean, then I did another one where um, I set it a bit more in the landscape of Dark Whispers. First, travel to the Oceana Stella. If you remember last week, we were looking at Vashti Hardy's map there of the Stella Oceanus with all the um, different islands. First, travel to the Oceana Stella where the islands are scattered like green dice upon a blue table. Pause on each island and listen to what the seashells whisper in your ear. Follow the raven's flight until you reach the hidden forest. Beneath a talking tree there will be a deep well. Shout into the well and listen to the echoes. It will give you good advice. Do not talk to any goblins and ignore whatever any trolls suggest. Beware of wolves and jealous guardians. Climb the glass mountain with the help of a sturdy pair of butterfly wings. Now capture a moonbeam, search in the caves until you find a map. The map will show you where your lost friend is imprisoned. And then I rounded off with my name and the fact that Vashti asked me to be the ship's poet. And the final bit here is something that was written a while ago, John, when we were doing something a little bit uh, like this by one of the children on Teaching Live, The Wonders of the Sea. Take the tick of time. That's it, Ella, who is at St. Lawrence. Take the tick of time and wait for the ice caps to melt. Plunge your fingertips into the ripples of the crystal clear waters and gaze upon your reflection, mirroring the iridescent moon. Blend the shimmering skin of a seal with the wonders of the sea. Explore the shadowy rainbow deep within and the vibrant colours of the coral reef while discovering old heirlooms. Wait for the tide to come in and ogle at the soft sand dragging its heels. Decorate with the warmth of the earth's fireball and sprinkle dust from the moon's eclipse. Your passion for our world will shine through. Now that was a sli slightly different context, but it's Which a lovely- Which was the best one, David, of those three? Sorry? Which was the best one of those three, do you think? Oh, stop it, you mean thing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's terrific from Ella. That's absolutely brilliant. It is a brilliant piece of writing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, gaze upon your reflection, mirroring the iridescent moon. Wow. I like I like the shimmering skin of a seal. Yes. There's something about that, and the yes. soft sand dragging its heels. Um, yeah, amazing piece of writing. So what we're what we're looking for, and I like uh, all of these pie because they're they're sort of they're giving instructions, but in a very sort of poetic form. Yes, um, and I think it. I, I think that gives you a lot of license to play with words, um, and I, I do. I do like this uh, activity a lot. So, so you could just come up with a list of instructions of how to find a lost explorer. But if you look at the way uh, Pi's done it, it he's. <clears throat> He's extended the ideas each time. Go to the end of the moonlit lane. So that could, uh, it's a simple instruction, uh, but he's extended it. And after a sunless mile, wait by the wooden gate. Um, and so and so on. Uh, ask the unicorn for a small slice of luck and pocket any advice. So lots of uh, extension of ideas um, in, in your set of instructions. Uh, and and kind of make it as as poetic and as magical as you can. So that's uh, that's great stuff. So uh, you've got plenty of time to do this because um, next week, folks, if there are any uh, year six English uh, students with us today, uh, you have our sympathies because next week you'll be doing the Sats. Uh, and also next Monday is a bank holiday as well. So we're not, uh, we haven't got a session at all next week. We are back the week after. Uh, if I just quickly look at the session times, just to confirm, it is um, Monday, May the 15th. So <coughs> weirdly that we're doing, weird that we're doing it on a Wednesday today. And uh, but we miss next week and we're back the week after uh on monday may the 15th by which time you've got sats out of your system and you will be able to give us your full in full attention and um right to your heart's content so terrific this week brilliant uh to hear all the audio wasn't it uh david yeah it was fantastic and i think yeah it's one of my favorite things to be honest when i always look forward to listening to them um, so yeah, give, give it a go um, if you, if you haven't done already, and if you have, keep it up because it's great work. Yeah, really good to to have so many, and so yeah, it's nice to listen to new voices as well as old friends. So well done, Ibrahim. You uh, you it was a real treat hearing you deliver yours today. <coughs> so that's it for this week. Um, we'll look forward to reading your. Uh, instructions on how to find a lost explorer and we will see you in two weeks well it's just under two weeks time uh ready for the next session of teaching live bye from me yeah bye everyone well done great session yeah bye everyone just to let you know the padlets padlet two is finished padlet one will be done in a few minutes righty ho we'll see you next time for another slice of teaching live bye bye <laughs>